Okay, there are several questions from uh, uh, GEC, Trishur, NIT, Durgapur, uh, Jaipur Engineering College, Kukas, and Nirma, Ahmedabad. Uh, so, before proceeding further, let me quickly go through each one of these very briefly. Uh, I am first uh, trying to connect to NIT Durgapur. Uh, NIT Durgapur, I can see you all. Uh, I understand you have a query. Please raise the question. Uh, over to you, NIT Durgapur. Uh, why we don't use ampersand while we uh, taking a string variable? Over to you. Uh, I'm sorry, I did not get the question exactly. Why we don't use ampersand while checking the string variable? Uh, first of all, string variable is a notion from C++. There is nothing like a string variable in C. We have only character variables and we have character arrays to store the string. Whenever we have character arrays, any individual element of the array would require an address specifier, but the array name itself acts as a uh, as a pointer whenever we pass it to the function. Let me go over to another center now. Nirma Ahmedabad has a query. I am trying to connect to Nirma Ahmedabad. Uh, I can see you Nirma Ahmedabad. I understand there is a query from your side. Please ask the query over to you. Hello, good morning, sir. We have two questions, sir. The first question is, I appreciate the power of attention in the uh, previous session. I have one doubt in that. For example, uh, we are processing one file which contains lakhs of records and uh, we, we are trying to read the records through AWK and you said uh, the, the variable which we are using in the AWK uh, is not to be initialized. For example, uh, lakhs of records are to be processed uh, and in, in between something happens wrong, so we will have to start all over again from the beginning. Is it so? Is there any mechanism to retrieve the pre-processed record through AWK? So we don't have to pre-process from the beginning all over again. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Uh, thank you for your question. The problem that you mentioned could happen with any program. Consider that instead of AWK, I have written a C program and it has to process lakhs of record and let us say it has processed some 2 lakh records and something drastically goes wrong because of either our error in the program or an error in data which we have not accounted for while writing the program in which case the program may crash and there will be no choice but to start all over again. In the conventional data processing we have the notion of checkpointing that is we usually complete some portion of processing put that much data in file, close that file and then start all over again and we record that as a checkpoint so that we do not have to reprocess the previous records. You could do exactly the same thing with awk. If you have lakhs of records to process, process some portion, let us say 50,000, accumulate the values and take the output onto a file, keep on doing this in batches. In general, the problem that you mentioned has nothing to do with awk. The question of initializing variable is a trivial issue. It is just that in C program you have to explicitly initialize your variables. In awk, the programming environment of awk itself initializes the variables. So it is not that we do not have to, somebody has to initialize variables which awk takes care of. In general, the awk processing is of a different kind and the conventional programming processing is different kind. However, when you mention lakhs of records, rest assured that awk with the given the modern hardware is perfectly capable of handling lakhs of records in a jiffy. So that is not a problem. JEC Kukas has a question. There are, there are two mechanisms to read the values. One is through C in and second is through scanf. And we know the uh, ranges of the different uh, data types. In case, in case uh, if somebody enters very large value, then uh, the compiler of the operating system takes care of the, the proper storage depending on the number of bytes reserved in advance. So how uh, the user will come to know that uh, the value read by the compiler or the operating system is the one which has the user has entered. 
So, uh, is there any validation mechanism or programmer himself has to take care of validation within the code? Thank you, sir. Over to you. Uh, thank you very much. The question is that if a user gives a very large value, the assumption here is that the operating system or the compiler will handle it. But what we want to know is that what value has been stored inside. The correct answer is as follows. Since the values are being given by a user in response to a read request from the program, and since we have written the program, we have absolutely no reason to depend upon operating system or any other mechanism uh, to take correct decisions for reading the pro uh, values. We must provide for handling all inputs. In fact, if a user gives a value which is larger than what can be accommodated inside the variable uh, location for which provision has been made, 2 bytes or 4 bytes, then the result will be unpredictable. It is not that the operating system will correct it. It is in fact the C scanf function which will appropriately try to read either give an overflow or truncate the number and store it. In general, neither the operating system nor the C programming environment automatically does any corrective action and therefore, we have to take the corrective action. Uh, the question is very pertinent because in real life data processing problem, inputs of all kinds can come. Indeed, that is the reason why for professional programs, generally you will not use scanf and printf without due care. It is not uncommon for people to read complete character strings from the input text and then interpret different characters internally by writing fairly complex validation programs. In short, validation of input data is the responsibility of the programmer who wrote the program and that responsibility cannot be handed over to operating system or the programming language. There is a question uh, from VJTI Matunga, how to store database in Turbo C? Okay. Now, I will go to the chat. There are questions from uh, GEC Kukas is saying, we are having multiple blanks in a given string, then how can I use mem chr function to locate my desired blanks? Well, that is a programming question. As a matter of fact, that is part of an assignment uh, that you will have to do because today in the lab, you will have to analyze the kind of data that uh, uh, you saw uh, or handling and you have to handle it through a C program. I have also included a sample C program which one of my students had written and you can read that program, but you will have to go beyond that. The handling of extra blanks, either leading blanks, trailing blanks, etc., etc., when you read a string is your responsibility. Yes, it is a challenge and to solve that challenge is the crux of a programmer's knowledge. So, rest assured you will get it. The answer is, unfortunately, there is no straightforward way and no direct way or no simple way. You will have to examine individual characters, examine blanks and then solve the problem. GEC Trishur has a question, why is the simple string handling features uh, available in awk is not incorporated in the C language. Okay. The answer is that awk was written explicitly to handle fields and strings and numerical values. The objective is completely different. C programming language was defined much earlier than awk. Moreover, there is no string handling capability directly in C. Please understand and appreciate that just as there is no input output capability directly, there is no instruction. Similarly, in C, the only instructions available to handle characters are individual character variables. You can compare the character variables, you can assign them character values and an additional facility available is the notion of a string in an array. That facility is that you can actually store a string by storing a series of characters of the string in array elements and putting a backslash null or backslash 0 or a null character at the end. These are called null terminated string. Frankly, even in C, there are no direct facilities. All facilities are obtained from the standard library which handles character string. And it is the strength of the functionality of the, uh, the uh, library which actually gives you those capabilities. What I would like to tell you is that whatever features that you see in awk, exactly that kind of processing can be done 
using the standard library functions. The only difference is you will have to build that functionality by appropriate usage of those functions and therefore, you will have to write a long program. But it is possible for example, that you identify a functionality in awk. Say for example, ability to trim out the blanks and just get the string or ability to do associative array building. You can actually build all of these in C, but you will have to write programs. So, you can write functions which invoke these capabilities and use your own function library to simplify writing of the main program. In general, I would suggest that it is wrong to compare awk with C or awk with any other procedural programming language or even object oriented programming language. The purpose of awk is different. In some sense, awk is not a third generation language. It is, it can be equated to a fourth generation language which we call prescriptive language like SQL. Those of you who have studied uh, databases will know that in SQL, you can give a command to do a huge amount of extraction of relevant data from files in the database by giving a simple four line, five line SQL statement. Now, the question can be asked that why SQL can do it and then why I can't do it in C and C++. Well, the objective of defining SQL was only that and it got defined much later. As a matter of fact, in real life, people understand that there are some things which can be done most easily by scripting languages such as awk or by database languages such as SQL, whereas there are certain things which can be done only with a C program. So, consequently, it is not uncommon to find various components being built in different languages and used together. For example, as far as database is concerned, you can actually write SQL statements to handle data retrieval, etc., from the database, but then retrieve that data in some array uh, uh, or variables in C program and then handle rest of the processing in C. So, I will repeat my answer. In general, it is not a good idea to say why this facility is there in this language and it is not there in that language. Every language is defined to provide certain features and to make things simplified in a certain sense. Other than that, however, uh, each language has its own purpose and objective. So, with that answer, we will continue our discussion. Uh, let me go over to PhD Coim tour. I can see PhD Coim tour here. If you have a query, please raise it over to you. Hello, sir. Good morning. We are happy to learn your interesting and idiotic section, sir. Sir, we have one question. Suppose I want to get the string and character input from the user for the dimension percentage S and percentage C continuously. If there is a problem, while we are giving the input to the system, uh, first I give the character string input to the system, then I give the space, the space is assigned to the character input, sir. So, what, uh, what we are do this? Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you. The, the query was that if I am trying to read a character string and uh, uh, along with it a simple character variable, then when I read a string using a specification, the string gets into the array pointed out by my pointer, but unfortunately the next blank is getting into the character variable, whereas I have perhaps another character given later. The point is that formatted input is best suited for situations when I want to get in different numerical values. If I am handling character strings and characters, my suggestion is very simple, do not try to read this using formatted input. Instead, read the entire string by something like a get line equivalent of function call and once you get it inside in a string, then actually you can apply scanf to that string or substring of that part by using a scanf. So, read the entire string from input as is given by the user and then parse it internally and analyze different components of the strings internally using your scanf function or directly examining bytes of the string. That is only decent way in which you can actually uh, 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 handle the input of strings and characters very easily. I will try to go over to JEC Cookers now. I can see uh, Jaipur Engineering College Cookers people and uh, if you have a query, please raise it now over to you. Sir, you got my question from Kate Window and you have already replied me. 
Thank you. Over to you. Thank you very much. So with this, we will uh, get back to our uh, session. Or oh, there is a query from another center. So let me go over to that center. Okay, I can see uh, my friends from VNIT Nagpur. First of all, let me take this opportunity to personally compliment uh, Professor Ravin Keskar and all others. Uh, I would, by the way, be interested in seeing uh, this Mr. Rahul. If he is present, can he raise his hand, please? Over to you. Rahul has raised his hand, sir. Uh, maybe he will come in front and uh, he will just uh, come, come, Rahul. What do you say? This is Rahul in between. Uh, thank you, Professor Keskar. Uh, for the benefit of all participants from all other remote centers, I mentioned at the beginning that there was an interesting uh, response to uh, the question of load balancing, and Rahul, in fact, has suggested a far more efficient algorithm which I described, which actually works in order n if both arrays are sorted. Uh, Rahul, I would like to thank you for your effort. Uh, please continue with the same zest. Uh, now, if there is any other question, uh, I would like uh, that to be raised. Over to you, Nagpur. Uh, there is one question from here. I will just give mic to the participant. Sir, my name is Ashwanda Mishram. I am doing MTech from VNIT. So, I have two queries. The first one is that uh, while compiling the yesterday's program splitting uh, the name into last name and first name, the compiler was giving a warning that it is dangerous to use get s. And the another question is that uh, while uh, iteratively calling, <laughs> iteratively using it, uh, it was not uh, stopping for input output at get s. So I used two get s uh, for doing that. Over to you, sir. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Meshram, for this question. Yes, indeed, whenever you try to get s, get s is actually considered a deprecated function and is not recommended for usage. I will, I will compile perhaps, uh, uh, I, will, I will collect perhaps a better way of handling that. Uh, but I assure you, get s will work in almost all circumstances. I did not understand why you are getting a problem if you have multiple get s's. Perhaps uh, you, because the specification still says that uh, uh, a string will be read up to uh, the uh, uh, backslash n, that is the new line character which will be replaced by a null character in the inputs, uh, in the string that you collect data in. So anyway, I will check it. Thanks for this observation. But indeed, it is true that all compilers say do not use get s, it is not good. I will try to find an alternative, a better alternative and, and get back to you. There is one more query. Okay. There is a query from Jalgao. Let us go over to Jalgao. I can see you friends there. Uh, please ask your query over to you. Good afternoon, sir. This is Adul Dosane from the Kese Engineering College, Jalgao. So my question is, uh, there is any commands available with the uh, Linux that uh, print the output directly onto the printer? Over to you, sir. Uh, okay. The simple answer is yes. There are commands available which will, uh, uh, which will go directly to the printer, provided the printer is connected and configured properly. LPR. Uh, or the line printer as the old term called uh, permits you to print. However, it is possible for your program to actually give uh, your output onto printf or any such statement and redirect the output file to a device file called printer file. There are multiple ways of doing it, but I assure you it can be done. Uh, so I, I will leave the details for you to work out. Please raise this question with your other colleague participants and the center coordinator. I will be curious to know what solution you find. And if you do not find also, please send an email to workshop support. I would like all other centers to think about this and uh, try to answer this question. However, this primarily relates to the capability of the underlying operating system rather than programming. It is a real problem, so we will try to answer it. Uh, but at the present, this is my answer. VJTI Matunga has raised an issue. Okay, one last center from the remote centers is remaining and then I will go over to VJTI Matunga and then we will get back to Rajaram Bapu College. I can see you. Uh, please raise your query over to you. Hello, sir. We have two questions. 
फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज वॉट इज डिफरन्स बिट्वीन नल पॉइंटर एंड व्हाइट पॉइंटर एंड सेकंड क्वेश्चन इज विच इज द बेस्ट बुक फॉर सी प्रोग्रामिंग ओके आई विल डिस्क्राइब व्हाइट पॉइंटर एट ए लेटर स्टेज एज आई सेड नल पॉइंटर इज समथिंग विच डज नॉट पॉइंट टू एनीथिंग void pointer however is not like that void pointer has a specific meaning i will explain this tomorrow under the miscellaneous topics so don't worry on that as far as the second question is concerned it's an extremely difficult question what is the best book for c programming let me assure you that there is no universally accepted answer why because we teachers ourselves have different opinions you ask this question to say 10 different teachers and you will get at least six different answers because each one of us depending upon our own style of teaching and depending upon the syllabus that we are trying to teach depending upon the background of the students may find a different book more suitable for me i still like the old kanigan and ritchie it is i still consider it one of the best books but it is slightly old there is a book on ncc by rakesh agarwal Uh, is ex IBM, uh, which is I find uh, very good, but I also find the other common books like Bal Guru Swami or Kanetkar, etc., etc., to be good enough. My contention is that it is not the book which matters. The purpose and objective of the book is that our students are able to look at a large number of examples and large number of problems. But the way they develop their understanding will depend upon how we explain it in the class. please remember that if book was adequate and access to book translated into programming knowledge then our librarians who hold many books on c programming would have perhaps become the best c programmers so access to books alone is not adequate and therefore instead of searching for the best book my suggestion is we should inculcate the habit amongst our students to read many books not just one book the sad tragedy is that these days students just want one book and want typically to be spoon fed unfortunately i believe we teachers are also responsible because we do not encourage them to read multiple books and the real reason why we don't encourage them to read from multiple books is we ourselves do not read from multiple books so my request will be that instead of looking for the best book and as i said one will find the best book for a particular objective depending upon the local requirements but the idea should be to read multiple books there is something very good in every book either some example some illustration some description and i think as teachers we should actually be picking out the best explanation from different places and giving that benefit of the composite knowledge to our students so that is my answer there is another center still which is ah vellore i can see vellore here there is a query from vellore over to you vellore uh, good morning sir um, i am dr sardi from vellore institute of technology uh, i had a query about uh, as we program we need to think about execution time or the program complexity So in some programs you are thinking about execution time. In some of the programs you are considering about program complexity. So in which programs uh, we need to consider the execution time where it is applicable? Over to you, sir. Okay, I will uh, sort of uh, rephrase my answer given earlier. About execution time, we should always be worried about the execution time of every program because our objective is to minimize that execution time. So the answer is. execution time and algorithmic complexity are two different things and they are not things to be worried independently about i only mentioned that we should not confuse between these two nations notions they describe different characteristic of a program execution time describes how long physically it takes for that program to execute as seen in my watch or as seen by time comma algorithmic complexity on the other hand describes the characteristic of the underlying algorithm of the program as to in limiting case when the size of the problem becomes infinity or tends to infinity what is the kind of theoretical complexity so i'll repeat again these two are independent things one describes the nature of the algorithm that is algorithmic complexity the other describes the real world physical time which it takes to execute a program so my answer is 
for every program I must worry about the efficiency of the program namely the execution time because that is my bread and butter when I run the program to handle say lakhs of records it should execute not in hours but preferably in minutes that is the objective. However, at a theoretical level I must understand the complexity of underlying algorithm. So, I will repeat again these two are independent things it is not that we should worry either this or that. Okay. In general whenever we write a program we should write our code such that operations are minimized and so that the execution time is less. However, for a deeper understanding of the underlying algorithm we should also analyze the algorithm and understand what is the complexity. So, these two are independent issues and they should both be treated with equal respect but in different uh, context the purpose is different. I hope that answers the question. Uh, the last uh, center is VJTI Matunga here. Uh, VJTI Matunga seem to have a problem in the camera, but they have asked a question how to store database in a turbo C except file handling. Uh, I think this question is ill formed. First of all, you do not store database in, in turbo C, you actually use turbo C commands to read data and write data just as in any other C. So, there is nothing special about turbo C per se, your data handling is decided by the instructions that you write in your program and these instructions typically have to read data, process it and store it. So, I assure you that all the instructions that we see in C programming are available in turbo C as well. There is nothing directly available or not available in either turbo C or uh, GCC or any other C compiler uh, for the databases specifically. Okay. NIT Varangal has asked this question, I have already answered it. Okay. I, we, we are already losing time because I am going to waste 5 minutes of your time in describing an interesting episode that happened in my class. I believe it was very instructive, although it is not technical, it is important. And then additionally, I want to very quickly describe the various functions available in C standard library for handling files. So, I will close this interaction for the time being. Rest assured that all your queries would be answered, but please, please make sure that you send those queries by email to workshop support. We have already accumulated previous queries and the answers are being compiled. We will complete that process uh, uh, for the additional questions that we get.